Kramer, selling the boy. He's a mighty small lad. Why should I buy him? Well, he's worth two pounds, dear Captain. He's a good lad. Yeah. Mm. Gentle. He never talks back. Get him his own shadow. <laughs> he won't cause you no trouble. They buy workmen in America, not charity cases. I'll give you a pound. What, what's a man to do with that? He's worth more. Take him away, then. I don't need him. I've got one boy already. Well, I'm not, not proud. I'll, I'll take your pound. You'll, uh, you'll get your profit. He's a, he's a good lad, he is. You're not leaving me. You've been a wart on my back ever since you was born. Your mother passed. But you know what they do with warts, don't you? They's cut away. <laughs> well, I'm cutting you away, young James. Perhaps they'll, uh, they'll make a man of you in the new world. <laughs> It's a favor I'm taking you to America, boy. You're well away from a man like that, father or no. You go below now. You'll find your way. But what's the use of caring when souls are sold around me? Yeah! Yeah! There's a hammock next to mine. Nobody else wanted these. This one's mine. You take the one next to it. Thanks. You don't have to be so frightened. Nobody's going to beat you or anything. My father just dragged me here and sold me. That's not easy. You're cold. Uh, you sure a bad dress for a voyage. Put this on. You'll die a cold before we even get to Boston. <laughs> How old are you? And what's your name? I'm 12. My name's James. James Porter. Davy Butcher. At your service. My uncle's sending me to America because he can't afford to feed so many of us. Did he sell you? No. He wouldn't do that. He arranged for my passage. And then the captain trades my labor in return. Everyone here has done it. They will all work three to five years for some master to repay their passage. Will I have to work five years? We'll have to work till we're 21. It's not so bad. America's the place to be, they say. We'll need to be friends, James. We're the only lads. Which means looking out, one for the other.
open your mouth. Well, please. <laughs> Is this one a joke, Foster? Bringing babes to Boston? I have need of him. I promised a friend a boy. A boy? Oh, this is not a boy. This is a, a net, a fly, a thimble. <laughs> oh, good. Put him down. What do you want for him to mop me? What? 30 pounds. 30 pounds? No. I've been in the streets of London. <laughs> the streets of London, I've heard that on every day. What's that? I bought you all. All for the little one. Follow me. We'll find each other, James. Be sure of it. talking as it is, convincing him you're a bargain. Stand taller now. You've had troubles, haven't you, boy? I was expecting a bigger, stronger, older boy. I'm not in the business of stealing him, William. I can only take what's brought me. Yeah. It's bad business, this soul driving. I didn't need a hand. You willing to get up before the sun, work hard, farm his life after moon's gone? Yes, sir. Seems like a good honest lad. Yes, I'll have to trade you for him. I've corn and I've smoked ham. Five bushels of corn? And uh, do you have five hams? William? That's a big price for a small boy. Now give me three hands. Nicely smoked. I have his papers right here. Oh, my neighbor Cotter pressed me to find a boy for him. Uh, this is the last of my lot. Just as well. I'd hate to be responsible for consigning a boy to that man's hands. How much for this one, Beaton? Well, now, for you, Mr. Carter, ten pounds firm price. For me? <laughs> Have you any idea how much a boy like this eats? Multiply that by eight or nine years. Well, you know laborers' wages. Multiply that by eight, nine, or ten years. Not worth more than five pounds. He's, uh, he's a good, strong, healthy boy. There's many that'll buy him. I'll give you seven pounds six. Flat eight. That's more than you paid for the whole lot. That's my price. Highway robbery. Take him. What have you bought? A rag doll for a boy? Piece of flotsam from the London gutters, I guess. Uh, we'll have to make him whole. Did Captain Foster have a boy for neighbor Carter? Just the one boy for us. Well, there's a blessing. That man's bitter root. What's our boy's name, Lynn? James Porter. <laughs> Get up, boy. I said, get up. Well, 
Well, are you? I'm somebody you've got to listen to for a long time. Get up, now. Are you an Ethiopian? My granddaddy or someone came from Africa. They were savages. And I've got a whole lot of that blood in me. So look after yourself. You're the first African I've ever seen. You work here too? That's all anybody does around here is work. I work the house. And that makes me special. You're the new field boy. And that means you do what everybody tells you. Everybody. Including me. My name's Davy Butcher. You call me Cato. You sweep this barn and milk those cows. I've a great hunger. You've got your chores to do first. Mr. Carter doesn't feed nobody who doesn't work. What are you doing, boy? I haven't had my breakfast yet. I'm hungry. Stand when you talk to me, bound boy. Wasting is what you're doing. Wasting and messing and stealing. Sir, I, I had no supper last night. And shall have none tonight if you talk to me like that. I'm your master. I owe you your meals, that's correct. But you owe me work. No work, no meals. I shall give you adequate shelter. Sufficient food. You must learn humility, obedience, honor for your masters. Now, you have stolen from me. I will keep breakfast from you. I've not had but those few squirts of milk since the ship yesterday. There's no teacher like hunger, boy. Learn from it.
I take the liberty? Which friend, James? Davy Butcher, the boy who was on the boat with me. The one there with the African boy. So, Carter got a boy after all. Oh. God help the boy. He looks so worn. May I go talk to him, please? Davy! Davy Butcher! You, boy! You're Waldress's bound boy. Yes, sir. How do you know my bound boy? We rode the same boat over, sir. May I talk to him now? You'll be seeing him when we meet to clear the fields, I expect. Be brief, boy. Thank you, sir. Davy! Davy! Davy Butcher! Time's port. We found each other, Davy. Like you said. You don't look so small anymore, James. I eat meat and drink milk now. You've a good master? Aye. He's even sending me to school. And you? Get out! Bound boy, come! <laughs> One day I shall tell you everything, James. by Mr. Cotter. Would you ask him, sir, please? David must ask him himself, James. Mr. Cotter? What is it, town boy? James Porter's got permission to explore, sir. I'd like to go with him. Privileges soften a worker. Contentment gives a man energy, Carter. Happiest cow I know gives the most milk. You're too easy, man. See, you two are back here inside the half hour. <laughs> I can't tell you what it's like for me, James. But I never get a real meal. Kato's the only friend I have. He slips me stuff sometimes, scraps and things. Kato's always saying I'll be leaving him when I'm 21, so why pour good money after that? I'm not worth anything to Mr. Cotter. 
Well, he even treats Kaito better than me because he's a permanent possession. I'm just some kind of thing around there, like a, a kettle or a broom. Even the floor's more important to him. Don't tell any bears about this cave. I mean, never mention a word about it to anyone. I swear. It's our secret place. Only ours. I swear, Davy. Swear? So much food since we got to America. <laughs> They're starting again. Let's all go back together. We can dance. Do you think we should? You're there, aren't you? Why shouldn't Davy? You too, Kato. I know where I belong. So do you. Wedding. I can invite who I want. Farm boys aren't supposed to have any friends. Farm boys aren't supposed to have any fun. Then you must be a farm boy, Simon Connor, because you certainly don't have any friends and you sure don't seem to have any fun. Yes, sir, Mr. Cutter. Walk out of this room, boy. Now. I said go! Oh, no. I say everyone's got a right to enjoy the wedding. You're too soft, Walters. You give these servants ideas. One of these servants 
is marrying my niece today. Hans was a bound man for years. As well he was, he knew his place. Haven't you any pride, man? I'm proud. I've got food enough to feed an extra mouth. You can start planning. Why don't you dance with me, John Carter? Thank you, ma'am. But the Carter family's going home. Disrespect. Stealing. Pride. Insolence. Impiety. But worse. Worse beyond all. You ridicule your master before his friends. Give the bound boy his first lash, Simon. He has ridiculed us before our neighbors. Discipline him, Simon. Oh, that's no way to strike, son. Teach a lesson. Davy, time to get up. Simon will be in to breakfast in a minute. I sent him out to tell the bound boy to refill the wood bin. The boy is gone. What do you mean, gone? He's nowhere. I was looking. You wake him? Why didn't you say anything? He was there when I waked him. Then it can't be far. Come on, son. We're going to run that devil down. Did you have a hand in this? No, sir. I just woke him up. Cato, you know the punishment for helping runaways. Thank <laughs> you. 
away. Did you, bad boy? I'll report you to the magistrate in Boston. He's a runaway, Waldress. The law tells me how to deal with him. Magistrate can't touch me. I'll buy him from him. Oh, you've suddenly become a rich man, Waldress. I'll give you two pounds cash money, three more and potatoes and pork. I have some prized sucklings. You can have your pick. He's a sour boy. The problem is yours for 30 pounds hard cash. You know I have no such money. And be happy, man. I'm saving you from your own generosity. You've enough mouths to feed. You've treated Davy with unchristian violence. Don't tell me how to handle my slaves. Put them up on your horse, Simon. Plant fish with the seas, James. Makes good fertilizer. Little trick we learn from the Indians. You hear, Walrus? Your boy run away again. You know he did. Where have you got him? I've not seen him since yesterday. Been looking for him all morning. Just disappeared. Oh, he's probably holed up someplace like some animal. No way that boy could get far. That boy would need a kind of grit I don't have to walk any distance. I should like to look for him, sir. You know, James, that helping a runaway is as serious a crime in the eyes of the law as being a runaway yourself. Should I just leave him be if I find him? Hmm. The law is a hard master when it contradicts good Christian sense. Boy, I saw yesterday could not survive too many nights in the wild. Look for him. God go with you. you when we met. It's good. Got about me. He'd have killed you by now. It's good seeing your face, James. Yours is no sight for any eyes.
food. And here's raccoon grease for your wounds. And a knife to whittle with. And here's your coat, Davy. Was it you gave me aboard ship? That's so needed at night. I'll try and bring you a blanket next time. Good lad. It's lonely business. I'd no way. Not for long. I'll stay here until my wounds heal. Then I'll make my way to Boston and ship out as a cabin boy. But if Carter finds you... Then I shall run away again. And again. Until I am free. Three weeks looking, still no luck in your searches, Jay. No more than I did the first day, sir. It would go hard with anyone that helped him. A bound boy like yourself would suffer most. And any other man helping Davy would be accused of stealing a servant. A very hard crime indeed. Carter is a hard man who would press against a hard crime. All right. Yeah, if there was any hope. Any hope at all? That the boy was alive. It would go against God's law to abandon him. If it comforts you at all, William, I would always choose God's law to man's. I must think some more. must wake. James. It's been storming these past two hours. And Mr. Waldress is not yet home. You must find him, James. Usual on payment, Doctor. Only hard cash. No barter. Well, surely your good wife could use some dozens of eggs? Smoked ham. I have no wife. If I made a practice of bartering, my home would look like a warehouse. My price for riding so far is a pound. Seven shillings, Doctor. I'll not have a man's last shilling. I'll take but six. I'll see you put the herb packings on three times a day and before he sleeps at night. It'll ease the pain and hurry the healing. 
You'll not be walking before summer, Walters. I'll see myself out. You had a pound more yesterday, William. How is it that today we are left with but a shilling? Ah, uh, yes, that pound. I made an investment. This is no time to be joshing. I did indeed make an investment. I bought Davy Butcher's time for one pound. No wonder you fell off your horse. Oh, William. Didn't Cotter think you mad to buy the time of a boy most likely dead? I told him that by some miracle, the boy might show up in Boston. He accepted my pound quickly enough and said good riddance to the boy, in any case. James, it is for you to protect this house now. And our reputation. I pray you do not find Davy too soon. Else Carter will call me a thief and uphold the charge in court. You understand? Yes, sir. might be some little trickery in my transaction. But I thought long and hard. And if I'm sure of anything in this harsh world, it's that it's right to rescue a human soul by whatever means come to hand. Now save your breath to cool your porridge. James, if you do come upon your friend in a few weeks, why, Tell Davy Butcher to come home. says to remind you that he's clearing his far fields tomorrow and you have an obligation to provide two strong hands. He wants to know how I'm going to manage with this broken leg. He's most particularly curious. I'm sorry he did not carry the message himself. You go out the barnyard now and then you'll see how I mean to meet my obligation. Simon. Carry the message carefully. Well, we'll be short one worker today. He said there'd be two hands to help. I'll be very interested to see William Waldress chopping down trees with only one good leg to stand on. What do you think Mr. Cotter will do when he sees you? Anything. Well, he's got no right to hurt us. That doesn't comfort me, James. Oh, 
teach you to run from your right master. I'll teach you to shame and humiliate your betters. I'll teach you honor. How, Mr. Carter? My master has sent his two boys to take his place. He says it will go hard on any man who strikes his bondsman. You insolent weasel. No. What's the matter with you, Simon? It, it's my fault. I didn't tell you about Davy. You knew about this? Yes. Mr. Walters bought him fair and square. He showed us the paper with your name on it. I, I was afraid to tell you. We've all been afraid of you. Simon. More than anybody. I thought you were here to work. Freedom, this I 